Hey everyone, Tactics here, and in today's video, I wanted to go over some of the pretty significant changes to both loot acquisition as well as the new upgrading paths available coming in patch 10.1. I've had a lot of questions over the past couple weeks regarding this topic as there's a ton of changes, mostly in my opinion, positive, but it can definitely be a bit confusing at first. So let's go through it all, including easier ways to obtain tier gear coming in the patch, changes to crafting gear, and then the new all-encompassing upgrade system, including a little table I made in Google Sheets at the end that kind of shows where you get the different kinds of gear, the max eye level you can upgrade that gear to, and then how that eye level kind of compares to the equivalent in Season 1 just to kind of put everything in perspective. Uh, remember though, if you guys find this video helpful, please do share it and subscribe to the channel for more content like it. And let's get into it starting with tier acquisition improvements. So basically, uh, Scarzard made a post uh, here called Class Set Acquisition Retrospective and changes coming in 10.1. And this kind of addressed things like the creation catalyst uh, and just general tier acquisition. So on the topic of the creation catalyst, we saw a lot of people weren't really happy with the timing in the patch that this actually came in right it came pretty late in the patch uh, at that point a lot of mythic plus and pvp specific players all they really had to get tier was their vault and if you didn't get lucky you all well, you didn't really have your tier until a couple weeks after this came out maybe the week it came out but maybe not now when it comes to obtaining tier gear through the catalyst blizzard kind of stands fast that their goal with the catalyst is to help players returning catch up uh, and so they are making a few changes to the catalyst to make it better in that sense so uh you're going back to what happened back in season four if you remember that so characters are going to automatically gain a charge each week uh, instead of having to earn that charge through a weekly quest like we did in season one so uh, for example any player who came back they would have no charges they would have to do that weekly quest which is going against what blizzard wants the creation catalyst to be so they're making sure you automatically gain those charges and it still has no currency cost to actually use those charges so returning players are not going to have any issues uh, just catching up immediately if they come back you know couple months into the patch and just have no tier gear um now in terms of how they're actually changing the acquisition of tier they're adding in a new achievement now this achievement uh is earnable once per character uh, and basically it's called the season two master and you can earn it one of three ways it's either getting ahead of the curve so killing heroic sarkareth it's either getting 2200 mythic plus score or 1800 pvp rating whenever you do one of those things on a character you will get a choice of a heroic raid eye level tier piece for that character and this is not restricted whatsoever it's any tier piece you so choose so you can use this to kind of fill in the gaps uh, maybe a, a few weeks into the patch for example and again every single character can do this it's not uh, an once per account achievement it's a character specific achievement so every single character will get one free tier piece from doing this you don't get three for doing aotc 2200 mythic plus and 1800 pvp it's just one of them um and this is fully upgradable using the upgrade system that i'm going to talk about uh later on in the video now on top of this they're also adding in an omni token in the raid what is an omni token basically it is a raid tier token that drops off of sargareth the last boss in the raid and this can be both looted by anyone so it's not uh class specific like the other tier token so can go to literally anyone in the raid and similarly uh, you can bring this to a vendor and buy any single tier piece uh, in the entire raid so you know you want it uh, and they can bring it to the vendor and they can say hey I want a helmet or hey I want a shoulders and you will get that tier piece at the eye level it drops in the raid that so note that it does drop off the last boss this tier token um, but the tier you actually buy is not last boss eye level it is the eye level that it drops at in the raid so those two things they're hoping makes acquiring tier uh at the beginning of the season before the actual catalyst opens uh much more quick for everyone generally this is a pretty positive change personally i think i'm still on team make the catalyst open up several weeks uh earlier uh, but if they really want to make it a catch-up mechanic uh, and they want to introduce other ways to kind of get that tier quicker i'm all for it. Uh, on the note of tier though, apparently they're also looking at having tier bosses drop less tier tokens later on in the raid once the catalyst is like fully open and whatnot, which makes a lot of sense actually if you think about it like later in progression, uh, you know, you're killing, for example, in this tier Broodkeeper for the first time. 
uh, a lot of the times the non-tier token upgrades are bigger upgrades than the tier upgrades from that boss. And so later on in the season, uh, if you're trying to get gear, for example, that Broodkeeper Ring, um, the Manic Grief Torch Trinket, uh, also the uh, Evoker Staff Rate, all those have exceptionally low drop rates because half of the loot table is tier. So then peeling back teardrops from those tier bosses later on in the season would help maybe uh, with players trying to specifically target those very rare, very powerful items off of bosses that drop tier. So hopefully that does work out uh, in their favor. It actually sounds like a great idea. I'm all for it. Uh, so we'll see how that ends up turning out. Uh, we also had a couple posts here uh, talking about the actual new upgrade system. Uh, itself. So let's dive into that a little bit and then I'll talk about how crafting gear uh, goes into this as well and then I'll show off that little uh, sheet at the end. So basically the goal of this is a new universal upgrade system encompassing everything world content, mythic plus gear, and even adding raid gear into this upgrade system as well. And so basically how this works is gear is going to drop in one of six upgrade tracks. And basically these upgrade tracks have a maximum eye level they can be upgraded to. So world content gear will have a lower max upgrade eye level than say heroic raid gear. Uh, just, just giving out an example, which makes sense. You don't want, you know, people having to all farm world content gear as their bis, right? So that kind of build that safeguard into the upgrade system. And to upgrade this gear, you're going to need a general currency called Flight Stones, as well as a more uh, tier specific currency called Crests. Basically, these Flight Stones, they're earnable no matter what you're doing. So if you're doing World Quests, you can earn Flight Stones. If you're doing Mythic Plus Dungeons, Flight Stones. Raiding, Flight Stones. PvP, Rares, everything, Flight Stones. You can basically think of this as like the Primal Chaos equivalent. So everything that would give Primal Chaos in Season 1 is going to give these Flight Stones uh, in Season 2. Uh, note on the PTR, these did have a cap to how many you could have in your bags. But my understanding is that they shouldn't have a like weekly cap like something like Valor did. Uh, and so this cap was at like 2,000, I think, in your bags. And the individual upgrades for every tier cost between like 100 and 200. So just keep that in mind. You have quite a significant amount you can hold on to. Seems like they just don't want you just holding on and hoarding them, which is fine enough, assuming that it's not a weekly cap. Now, in terms of the crests, these crests are capped. They drop in fragments. You need 15 fragments to form a singular crest. And you are capped at 10 full crests or 150 fragments each week of each specific type of crest. This cap does roll over from week to week. So the first week, you'll have that cap at 150 fragments. The second week, it'll be 300, etc., etc. So that one functions uh, a lot more like the Valor cap. And know that this does not include fragments that are rewarded from one-time events. Uh, there are some quests and stuff like that uh, that don't count towards your actual weekly cap. Uh, and this is kind of like uh, your concentrated primal focus, primal focus equivalents, if that makes sense, uh, except instead of just being for uh, heroic raid uh, and mythic raid kind of eye level type of gear, it goes down the entire way. So you have that concentrated primal focus that still exists in this form. You have that regular primal focus that still exists. And then there's a couple more uh, for gear that is of lower eye level. Essentially, that's how you would think about this. Also note that you can downgrade your higher ranked crests if you so choose to be lower ranked crests. Uh, so you don't have to spam that lower level content. You can just do that high level content if you don't need that high eye level crest, you can reduce it to a lower one and that doesn't go towards the cap for that lower crest. It goes towards the cap for the higher crest that you obtained it at initially. In terms of where you can actually obtain these crests, it's very similar to how it is now, like I mentioned. So uh, for example, the concentrated primal focus, right? That drops from mythic plus 16s and mythic raid. Well, the equivalent is going to be aspect crests. And these again will drop from mythic plus 16s and up and mythic Abaris. Uh, similarly, the Worm Crest Fragments, this will drop from Mythic Plus 11 to 15, as well as Heroic Abaris, which is equivalent to the regular Primal Focuses in Season 1. Then the two other new ones, you've got the Drake Crests, and this will be available from Weekly World Content, um, Mythic Pluses from Plus 6 to Plus 10, as well as the Normal Raid. Then you have the Whelpling Crest, which is just generally available from World Content all over the place, as well as Mythic Pluses up to Plus plus five, and then Raid Finder Aberyst. So you're going to be getting that from equivalent eye level 
uh, content essentially uh, and in terms of how much you're going to be getting from this various sources of content uh, timed mythic plus keys in the corresponding bracket give you 12 fragments remember you need 15 to get a full crest uh, untimed mythic plus will still give you fragments but they give you less they give you five fragments per untimed key raid bosses will give you 10 fragments per kill where the end raid bosses giving you 15 uh, instead and then, of course, through the weekly content, world content, that's going to be variable depending on what it is. Another really, really important thing to mention in the system is the alt friendliness. So there is actually a built in discount uh, in this system. So if you already have a higher eye level item, for example, on your character's sheet and your bags, whatever, you will gain a 50 percent cost reduction on the flight zone cost, so that's the thing that's from everywhere, and you will get a 100% reduction on the crest cost. Now, it does require two items for uh, rings, trinkets, and one-headed weapons, so you'll need two items of a higher eye level in those three cases. Uh, however, for example, right, you have like a two really good uh, trinkets that you've upgraded or whatever, uh, and then your actual BIS trinket drops. It'll be half the flight zone cost and zero crest cost to upgrade that one all the way up really really good change and the big thing to note for alt is that the flight stone discount not the crest discount the flight stone discount is also applied to alt so if you have a higher for example two-handed weapon on any character and a two-handed weapon drops for your alt the flight stone cost will be halved for all of those upgrades which is pretty nice uh, in my opinion you still have to earn those crests of course they're going to act like that primal focus or concentrated primal focus uh, like i mentioned which also wasn't account wide in season one but at least that primal chaos essentially that that equivalent will be discounted from day one now to kind of put all this in perspective let's take a look uh, at this chart here basically uh i have the season one equivalent eye level here on the left side and the actual eye level this will drop at season two i started up uh, at the veteran drop upgrade tier there is adventure and i believe there's one more before this as well which is a bit lower eye level uh, but veteran is where mythic plus drops and raid drops start and that's mostly relevant to the audience that watches my video so that's where i started uh this chart here uh, and basically this shows the eye level that the gear drops at this shows the max eye level you can upgrade uh to and this shows the crest required so like i said there's the whelpling crests break, worm, and aspect for these high, high level um, pieces in order to upgrade those specific ones uh, to this corresponding upgrade level. And there's some important things to note from this chart here. And I'll link this down in the description below if you want to see this for yourself as well. Um, so big things, uh, changes from season one to season two, great vault eye level for these lower level keys has been increased. So you will get relatively uh higher eye level gear in season two compared to season one if you're doing one of these um lower uh capped keystones which is pretty nice um the other thing is to upgrade to these various areas you'll notice there is no mythic plus rating requirement listed anywhere that's because this requirement is gone the only thing you need now to upgrade gear is the flight stones and the crests no mythic plus score which again another piece of alt friendliness there you just need to actually earn the tokens you can or the crests rather if you want to do that spamming the same you know freehold all the time uh then you can do that you don't need to do every single dungeon get your mythic plus score up and then upgrade it you can just spam freehold to your heart's content get enough uh crests to upgrade your stuff and send those upgrades pretty nice there now the big change which some people may not like is that uh, the max upgrade level does exist. So basically what that means uh, is that you will have to do keys of a certain level if you want to be able to upgrade it to the max potential. So uh, what that means here, if you look, the max potential here is either uh, is a hero five out of five upgrade or the aspect, just the regular mythic drop. So mythic gear can't be upgraded. Uh, you can upgrade hero gear up to 441 equivalent 415 in season one so the same cap as now uh, but that hero gear to be part of the hero track has to drop at this content level or higher which means that you have to spam 17s or higher to get gear part of the hero upgrade track this will also come from gear uh from the great vault in plus eight or plus nine great vault uh, so again a little lower uh, than it would have been in this current season which makes it nice but again plus 17s or higher and heroic raid in order to be part of that hero track so that you can upgrade it up to 441 there now this does again the benefit 
raid gear can be upgraded. So normal raid gear can be upgraded all the way up to 437 eye level equivalent to 411. So you can actually upgrade normal raid gear up to just below the value of mythic raid gear. Similarly, you can upgrade heroic raid gear, which is now dropping from the hero track, all the way up to the value of base mythic. Very, very nice changes, or quality of life changes rather, for people that get a decent amount of gear from normal uh, and heroic, and actually gives more value to that gear as well for mythic raiders, because you know there's you can do the normal raid, try and get some very rare item, hunt for it on normal eye level, and then you'll be able to upgrade it all the way up uh, to, to champion, right? Uh, to the end of champion here at 437. Similarly, heroic, you can upgrade it all the way up to base mythic eye level. This gives a lot more value to doing normal and heroic raids, and it makes you feel not as bad, specifically targeting that very rare loot, which again isn't included in this chart here, uh, on lower difficulties. So that's really, really nice to see as well. Speaking of the raid, I have the uh, boss bracket eye level here. There are four eye level brackets in this raid, as you can see. The first three bosses drop this eye level, um, then the two bosses after that that have the first starting tier gear drop three eye levels increased from that. Uh, then the last, or not the, the middle two bosses that drop tier gear rather, uh, have the, the Dathia Kurog eye level equivalent, and then of course the final two bosses have the final two boss eye level equivalent. So there's one additional eye level bracket in the raid, keep that in mind. Then let's talk about crafting here at the very end. Uh, last two columns here, there's crafted track. Uh, one and, and two just because they overlapped a little bit. Um, so basically, if you're looking at spark gear, so sparks of shadow flame, they're the new spark in season two. You will, of course, need to uh, use these to upgrade your current crafting gear or create new crafted gear. And in terms of acquiring these sparks, it does appear to be similar to the start of season one, where it was an every two week cadence. Uh, you have to earn these kind of fragments of shadow flame and you get one per week and you need two fragments to create a spark. It's still up in the air if they're going to just continue that the entire season uh, or if they're going to do what they did in season one and cap that at the first like five sparks and then their free drop because that didn't go over too well. The drop rate was very, very low. Uh, so not 100% sure how it's going to function, but it does look like it's going to be at least initially every two weeks per spark. Now, how this system actually works is again, it uses the new crests uh, with this upgrade system. So to make the worm gear here, so that's the equivalent to the primal focus uh, gear in current season uh, that requires the worm crests here uh, and that will get you all the way up to 437 or 411 for the season one eye level and then you have the aspect which will use the aspect crests and that will get you all the way up to 447 so come to 421 so you'll notice here there is a three eye level increase from what we had in season one to what's going to be happening in season two for crafted gear so previously crafted gear cap is 418 now basically the crafted gear cap is going up to 421 so you get better gear from crafting uh you will have to use of course those crests like i mentioned and how that actually works is basically uh, enchanters have a new recipe you'll send it to an enchanter they'll upgrade your crest to enchanted whatever crests and then you'll use that to actually uh, attach onto your shadow flame spark gear uh, to upgrade it to the corresponding eye level you also notice up here at the top i have this whelpling uh gear this whelpling gear is the non-spark crafted gear so you can actually get your non-spark crafted gear all the way up to 408 using those whelpling crests as well so maybe a little a uh, little uh boost for alt characters coming in uh that are a little bit under geared uh, outside of that just uh, sockets from season one will not transfer over uh, if you upgrade that same piece of crafted gear to season two, uh, that was something people were talking about early on and has been caught by Blizzard. So your sockets are going to disappear. There are, of course, also a bunch of new recipes coming. There's some new enchants. Uh, there's like a new leather working uh, patch. There's some new embellished gear. Lots of cool stuff coming in the patch. So I'm excited. Hopefully you guys are as well. Uh, hopefully this was informative for you guys and it made the new upgrade system kind of make more sense. If it did help you, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more content like this, including very, very soon, 
full Mythic Plus dungeon guides for the new season, as well as raid boss guides for Avarice, help you all prepare for season two. Also, feel free to check me out over on my Twitch channel at Tactics, where I stream high Mythic Plus keys, as well as Mythic rating from a tank's perspective. Especially also, if you have any questions about this or anything else, drop them there or even down below in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer. Also, I do want to shout out all of my supporters over on Patreon. Thanks so much for helping me continue to create all of these videos. Otherwise, thanks everyone so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.